This is Algebra 1, Semester 2. It's the third unit called Quadratics, and it's the fifth lesson in that unit. It's Factoring Special Products Practice. It's on creatormath.com under the Algebra tab on the Table of Contents. The instructions are copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the Table of Contents with the notes for those pages. Make sure you understand the notes are in a separate link on that table of contents. You put in the notes on the pages on the comp book and then these problems in after it. And squeeze them all in. Make them small. They should all fit. It's from creatormath.com under the Algebra tab. This is the Algebra lessons. Algebra 1. So this is called special products practice. And we're once again multiplying binomials. We're going to use the FOIL method again. We're coming up with factoring here in terms of we're going to factor this trinomial, which was produced. Uh, it is a quadratic. Why? Because it's raised to the power 2. How is a quadratic formed? Well, if it's two binomials being multiplied together, right, then it's four multiplication steps, where is probably the easiest way to remember what a quadratic is, um, but it's raised to the power 2. So I'm going to go straight to the answers first, and I'm going to kind of go backwards, which a lot of us do. We go forward and backward in math. I'm going to look at this first. I already know this is the right answer, so I'm, I get to cheat a little bit because all of my um, answer sheets have the correct answer as the first answer. When you take these assignments, they'll be randomly mixed, so you'll have to look a little bit harder. Um, this says x plus 11 in parentheses caret 2, which means squared. So what does that mean? x plus 11 squared. Looks a little bit more like that when I handwrite it. When we write this out, anything squared is itself times itself. And there's two of them. That's what two means. If it was three, there'd be three of them. Um, in this case, it's to the power two. We use a method called FOIL, which divides these two binomials. Why are they binomials? Because bi means two. There's two terms. This is a binomial, and this is a binomial. We're multiplying two binomials. We use a method called FOIL, which involves the first the outside, the inside, I, and the last terms, L. And so it's F-O-I-L, it's called FOIL. It's our method in the United States instead of using the distributive property, and I guess it is a form of the distributive property, but we don't typically break it up like we normally would break up X times this value and one, plus one times this value if we're doing distributive. We do this FOIL thing, um, and we like it for some reason. So x times x is the first terms. x times x is x squared. The outside term is 1 times x or x. The inside term is 1 times x or x. And I just realized that I wrote x plus 1. Why am I writing that? I need an 11 here. Come on. And 11 here. So let's try this again. Outside is 11 times x or 11x. Inside is 11 times x, or 11x. And last is 11 times 11, or 121. We combine like terms right here, 11x, and 11x is 22x. So this becomes 22x plus 121 plus x squared. All right, so this is the right um, multiplication. When we go backwards, we're now asking what two values when multiplied equal this number and when added equal this number. So when we factor, we go in reverse. Well, if we had plus 11 times plus 11, we would get 121 here. And if we added them, we'd get a positive 11. But just as a note, just to keep in the back of your mind on the next problem, if we had negative 11 times negative 11, because two negatives equal a positive, that does multiply to equal positive 121. But when we add them, we'd get a negative 22x here, right? We get a negative. So if we find a problem like this one, notice the next problem. I see where they're headed with this already. This one says what two numbers multiplied together equal 121. I'm going to use negative 11 times negative 11 because I need to add them to get negative 22 right here. All right, so then we put these into to, um, x minus 11, x minus 11. The reason they're called special products is because they're the same value we can then combine them into this squared. And I'll show you another one more likely is part of the special is where one of these is a minus and one of these is a plus. And therefore, the middle term drops out, which we find very enjoyable um, as math teachers. All right, so x minus 11 squared is this one here. Let's factor the next one. So speaking of that, 
Notice that this one here, x squared minus 121, here we have a tail but no middle terms. No middle term. So we want to know what two numbers when multiplied equal negative 121 and then make that middle term disappear. Well, I already started setting you up in this direction. If we had a minus 11 times a positive 11, we would get negative 121. That would check out. And if we added these, doesn't negative 11 plus 11 equal 0? That means there's no middle term. So when we see these, and this is part of the special products group that we are so excited about because it drives students crazy. They're like, wait a second, where did that middle term go? And it's so different looking from the original problem, like this kind of problem, right, that uh, students struggle with it at first until they figure out what's going on. So this is going to be x minus 11, x plus 11. Drop them into two binomials, and that's this one here. Notice I wrote it x minus 11, x plus 11. Because it's multiplied, doesn't matter what you put first. They put x plus 11, x minus 11. Doesn't matter. These are the same answer because they, because they produce the same result. All right, so they ran us through three options. I feel like they're going to do this again. Here we have what number? What two numbers equal, when multiplied, equal 36, and when added, equal 12? Well, 6 and 6. So if I add a plus 6 times a plus 6, I get plus 36. And if I add them, I get plus 12. So this is going to be x plus 6 and x plus 6. And there's two of these, so you get x plus 6 squared, or caret 2. Now, I know where they're headed. This is going to be a minus now. So I feel like they want to know what two numbers when multiplied equal positive 36 but added equal negative 12. Well, negative 6 times negative 6. The rules for negative times negative change it to a positive. So 36 here when multiplied. But when we add negative 6 plus negative 6, we get negative 12. So we drop this into two binomials. And we, because there's two of them and they're the same, we combine them and say caret squared. There's two of these, so just call it to the power 2. x minus 6, caret squared, caret to the power 2. Factor the following um, completely. Now, this is one of these where, here we are, let me rewrite it, x squared minus 36. We're missing the middle term. So what two numbers, when multiplied, equal negative 36, and then equal 0 for the middle term of a trinomial? When we combine like terms, well, it's going to be negative 6 and positive 6. So they're the same value, which is good, because when they add, they go to 0. When they multiply, it, the negative times positive negative, that's how we get the negative 36. So drop these into binomials. x minus 6, x plus 6. Factor the following completely. This one does get a little bit more complicated. I know that we've got a term out here, a lead term. So anytime we see a lead term like this, try to remove that from the entire situation by factoring it out in the reverse of the distribution process in this case. So there's a 2 and a 2. There's 6 2s and a 12. And there's 9 2s and an 18. So if we write this 2 times, take the 2 out of the x squared, we're left with just x squared. Divide it out. Divide 2 by 12x, we're left with plus 6x. Divide 18 by 2, we're left with plus 9. Now we're going to take this one and repeat the process. What two numbers when multiplied equal 9 and add to 6? Well, plus 3 times plus 3. Plus 3. And therefore we have x plus 3 and x plus 3. There we go. And the 2 stays with it out front because these are the same. We have 2 times x plus 3 squared. Some of these factoring problems can get very difficult, but you probably won't encounter those until Algebra 2, and I'm not going to push you into those more difficult ones. I'd rather you play with these uh, simpler ones at first. And so let's continue. Now we have the situation where this is a, a negative value in here, right? But let's repeat the process. There's a 2 on the lead term, a coefficient of 2. Let's pull the 2 out by factoring. We're left with 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared a negative 6x here, and 18 divided by 2 is plus 9. There we go. What two numbers when multiplied equal 9 and then added equal 6? Well, it's got to be a negative 3 and a negative 3 because to get negative 6, negative 3 plus negative 3 to be negative 6, we need the negatives there. But when multiplied, negative times negative is positive. So we're going to drop this into an x minus 3. 
and an x minus 3. That's the binomial they originated in. The 2 goes out front because these are the same. We say 2 times x minus 3 and call it squared. Factor the following polynomial completely. This one, wow, is missing a middle term. Let's do the same thing. Let's get rid of the 2 out front so we can have just an x squared minus 9. So this would, to redistribute, you would multiply here and here, right? And it would become 2x squared minus 18. Check. Now we have this situation where what two numbers when multiplied equal negative 9, but when added equal 0 because that middle term is gone? Well, it's got to be a plus 3 and a minus 3 because when they add, they go to 0 and disappear here in the middle. But when they multiply, negative times positive is a negative. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 9. Check. Rewrite these in a binomial format. x plus 3. x minus 3. Don't forget the 2 stays with this now. Otherwise, you'll never get back to this form. Right? And re We could re-multiply all this and go right back to this. Math is full of forward, like multiplication, and reverse division. And that's what um, factoring is. It is the reverse of multiplication, or a repeated division process. We have other forwards and reverses like addition and subtraction, like power and root, etc. So, 2 times x plus 3, x minus 3. Check. This looks like the same situation. Pull the 4 out. We get x squared 49 divided by 4. Yep, my brain's not doing anything with that. I'm not sure where I'm going with this one. 49 divided by 4, I'm not sure where I'm going with all of that. So, let's, let's cheat. Let's go backwards. Let's see which one if we FOIL these, right? So FOIL is, let's take the first, outside, inside, and last. So this would be 2x times 2x, or 2x, or whoops, 4x squared. Uh, outside, 2x minus 7x would be minus 14x. 7 times 2x would be plus 14x. Last would be negative 49. The negative 14x and the positive 14x disappear, and we're left with 4x squared minus 49. So um, you are going to have to be flexible. Notice my brain wanted to go the same route we'd been going all along, and then, you know, nope, ain't working. This isn't working, right? So I'm going to have to go back and try something else and rethink this. Anytime we're going to go... You know, I always ask students which is easier for them to do, multiplication or division, and it's almost universally multiplication. Going forward, in other words, going FOIL forward to this is always easier than going from this back to that, which is what factoring is, a reverse of multiplication, and in uh, factoring's case, the reverse of multiple multiplication, repeated multiplication. So... Um, Use whatever strategy you can to go ahead and do these. Uh, in Algebra 2, you'll probably get a little bit more rigorous methods for factoring, but in Algebra 1, I think this should suffice. So match up this lesson with its assignment by name. Be specific. This one is Factoring Special Products Practice. It's on creatormath.com. Make sure you're under the Algebra tab.